Now we are going to start the proof of the existence of harmonics. The first thing we will do is that we are going to introduce the original intuitive idea of the proof due to harm of the existence. This actually provided the motivation for wealth proof in full generality. So now let's talk about this. The idea is the following. The goal is to construct a measure that is left G invariant. And to this end, Har designed something that will serve as the unit for the measure. And the measure of a general set will be defined as a ratio to this unit measure. This is the basic idea of Har. Specifically, he did the following. If E is a broad subset of G, and V is a non-empty open subset of G, let this quantity E column V denote the smallest number of left translations of V that cover E, namely this E column V using the notation will be the infimum of the cardinality of the index set i such that E is contained in the union of x times v where x ranges over i. And of course, here i is the subset of g. Thus, this quantity e column v can be seen as a relative measure of E with respect to V. But remember our goal is to find a measure that is on any Borel subset E itself. So the question would be, how do we construct an absolute measure for E? To obtain this absolute measure, Har's idea was the following. So first, we fix a pre-compact open subset E0, whose measure we consider as the unity. And we consider the ratio E column V over E naught column V as an approximate of the absolute measure of E. Notice that clearly we have the ratio E column V over E naught column V is equal to the ratio of X times E column V over 
be not column V for any x in G. Namely, the translation by element in G does not change this ratio. This is simply due to the definition. Because in this definition, a left translation V does not change the number of translates of V that could cover E. So this makes this approximate left G invariant. And now, do you understand why we call this an approximate of the absolute measure? The reason that we call this an approximate of the absolute measure is that we are going to construct or define the absolute measure V by taking the limit of this in some way. And do you see how we are going to take limit? I will let you think about it for a while, but I will tell the answer anyway. The way that we are going to take the limit of this is that we are going to let V shrink to the identity. So we hope as V shrinks to the identity, E of G, this ratio will give us a hard measure of E as a limit. So heuristically, we can write this mu of E as a limit as V approximate E of this ratio. So this is Hart's original idea of the proof. And somewhere he used the second countability of the topological group G. And later, the second countability was removed by well.